Welcome to the Bible Quiz. In this video, we are set to unravel the extraordinary life of Nebuchadnezzar, a central figure in biblical narratives. Nebuchadnezzar, the mighty ruler of Babylon, left an indelible mark on history. Our focus today will be on two pivotal phases of his life, the reign of power and his first dream. Join us on this enlightening expedition as we navigate through the significant chapters of Nebuchadnezzar's life. Our quiz, consisting of 25 thought-provoking multiple-choice questions, aims to deepen your understanding of biblical narratives and provide an engaging platform for learning. Let's get started. Question 1. When did Nebuchadnezzar besiege Jerusalem? A. In Jehoiakim's third year. B. In Zedekiah's fifth year. C. In Jehoiachin's tenth year. D. In Gedaliah's first year. You get ten seconds. That's A, in Jehoiakim's third year. Daniel, chapter 1, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim king of Judah, Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The siege resulted in the capture of the city and the exile of Jehoiachin and numerous inhabitants to Babylon, shaping the course of biblical history. Question 2. Who delivered Jehoiakim into Nebuchadnezzar's hand? A. The Lord B. The nations C. Marduk D. Belshazzar You get 10 seconds. That's A, the Lord, Daniel chapter 1, verse 2. And the Lord delivered Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. This emphasizes God's involvement in the events of captivity and exile as part of God's plan and judgment on Jerusalem. Question 3. Where did Nebuchadnezzar carry off the articles of the temple? A to the gates of Babylon, B, to his garden in Babylon, C, to the temple of his God, D, to the desert of the Arabah. You get 10 seconds. That's C, to the temple of his God. Daniel chapter 1, verse 2. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia and put in the treasure house of his God. Nebuchadnezzar carried off the articles of the temple to the temple of his God in Babylon, displaying the spoils as a symbol of victory and the superiority of Babylonian deities. Question 4. Who did Nebuchadnezzar order to bring some from the Israelites from the royal family and nobility to Babylon? A. Ashpenaz B. Eliashib C. Ebed-Melech D. Ariok You get 10 seconds. That's A, Ashpenaz, Daniel chapter 1, verse 3. Then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility. Nebuchadnezzar ordered Ashpenaz to bring some from the Israelites, specifically individuals from the royal family and nobility, to Babylon. Question 5. 
Nebuchadnezzar told Ashpenaz that he wanted young men with all of the following qualities, except A. Well-informed B. Handsome C. Perfect tan D. Quick to understand You get 10 seconds That's C, perfect ton. Daniel, chapter 1, verse 4. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. Remember to hit that subscribe button and join our community to stay updated on all the amazing content we have planned. Question 6. What did Nebuchadnezzar tell Ashpenaz he was to teach the Israelite captives? A. The wisdom of Babylon. B. Court etiquette and protocols. C. How to work with gold and silver. D. Language and literature of Babylon. You get 10 seconds. That's D, language and literature of Babylon. Daniel, chapter 1, verse 4. He was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. Nebuchadnezzar wanted the Israelite captives to be instructed in the language and literature of Babylon, aiming to assimilate them into the culture and education of his kingdom. Question 7. What did Nebuchadnezzar assign the Israelite captives daily? A. Exercise and food. B. Food and wine. C. Learning and exercise. D. The worship of his gods. You get 10 seconds. That's B, food and wine. Daniel, chapter 1, verse 5. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. Nebuchadnezzar's purpose was to maintain and assimilate them into Babylonian culture while enhancing their physical health. Question 8. Who were among those chosen from Judah to serve for Nebuchadnezzar? A. Elijah, Elisha, Obadiah, and Micah. B. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. C. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Hosea. D. David, Solomon, Nathan, and Gad. You get 10 seconds. That's B, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Daniel chapter 1, verse 6. Among those who were chosen were some from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Question 9. How did Nebuchadnezzar react to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah after talking with them? A, he rejected them from his service. B, he was disappointed in their abilities. C. He considered them equal to the magicians and enchanters. D. He found them ten times better than others and allowed them to enter his service. You get ten seconds. That's D. He found them ten times better than others and allowed them to enter his service. Daniel, chapter 1, 
verses 18 to 20. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So they entered the king's service. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. Question 10. What happened to Nebuchadnezzar in the second year of his reign? A. He captured Jerusalem. B. He made a tower in Babylon for his gods. C. He had dreams and his mind was troubled. D. He tested Daniel's wisdom and understanding. You get 10 seconds. That's C. He had dreams and his mind was troubled. Daniel chapter 2, verse 1. In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled and he could not sleep. Question 11. Nebuchadnezzar summoned all of the following to tell him what he dreamed, except A. Necromancers B. Magicians C. Enchanters D. Sorcerers and Astrologers You get 10 seconds. That's A. Necromancers. Daniel, chapter 2, verse 2. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. Question 12. What did Nebuchadnezzar threat to do if the astrologers did not tell him what the dream was and interpret it? A. To feed them to lions and burn their houses. B. To exile them from Babylon forever. C. To chop off their heads and feed their carcasses to the birds. D. To cut them to pieces and turn their houses into rubble. You get 10 seconds. That's D, to cut them to pieces and turn their houses into rubble. Daniel, chapter 2, verse 5. The king replied to the astrologers, This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your houses turned into piles of rubble. Question 13. Nebuchadnezzar promised all of the following if the astrologers told him his dream and explained it. Except A. Rewards B. A crown C. Gifts D. Great honor You get 10 seconds. That's B, a crown. Daniel, chapter 2, verse 6. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Question 14. What did the Nebuchadnezzar accuse the astrologers by their insistence that he first tell them the dream? A, they were lying to him. B, they were lacking knowledge. C. They were trying to gain time. D. They were trying to develop a plot against him. You get 10 seconds. That's C. They were trying to gain time. Daniel chapter 2, verses 7 to 8. Then the king answered, I am certain that you are trying to gain time, 
because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. Nebuchadnezzar accused the astrologers of trying to gain time by insisting that he first tell them the dream. He suspected that they were attempting to delay and strategize rather than providing a genuine interpretation. Question 15. How did the astrologers evaluate Nebuchadnezzar's request to interpret his dream? A. It was irrelevant. B. It wasted time to interpret. C. It could be interpreted but needed so much time. D. It was exceedingly difficult and beyond the capability of humans. You get 10 seconds. So that's D. It was exceedingly difficult and beyond the capability of human. Daniel chapter 2 verses 10 to 11. What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among humans. The astrologers acknowledge the difficulty of Nebuchadnezzar's request, stating that interpreting the dream without knowing it first was exceedingly difficult and beyond the capability of any human. Question 16. What was Nebuchadnezzar's response to the astrologers telling him the matter was too difficult for any human being? A. He put the astrologers in prison and would not release them. B. He tried to remember his dream so he could tell them what it was. C. He ordered the Jewish sages to be brought in to help with the matter. D. He ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. You get 10 seconds. That's D. He ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel chapter 2 verses 12 to 13. This made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. Frustrated by the astrologer's inability, Nebuchadnezzar ordered the execution of all wise men in Babylon, a drastic response reflecting his anger and disappointment in their failure to interpret his dream. Question 17. Who helped Nebuchadnezzar interpret his dream? A. Daniel B. Hananiah C. Azariah D. Mishael You get 10 seconds. That's A. Daniel Daniel Chapter 2, verses 24 to 44. When faced with Nebuchadnezzar's demand to interpret his dream without revealing it, Daniel didn't rely on human wisdom alone. Instead, he sought divine guidance through prayer. God responded by unveiling both the dream and its meaning to Daniel. Question 18. According to Daniel, in Nebuchadnezzar's unknown dream, what stood before him? A. Seven fat cows. B. An enormous statue. C. A goat pushing from the west. D. Four horns with a crown on each. You get 10 seconds. That's B, an enormous statue. Daniel, chapter 2, verse 31. Your majesty looked, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous, dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. Question 19. What was the statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreamed made of? A, gold. B, gold and silver. 
C. Gold, silver, and bronze. D. Gold, silver, bronze, iron, and clay. You get 10 seconds. That's D, gold, silver, bronze, iron, and clay. Daniel chapter 2, verse 33. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of baked clay. Question 20. What struck the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream and smashed it? A, a log. B. A stone. C. A spear. D. An arrow. You get 10 seconds. That's B. A stone. Daniel chapter 2, verses 34 to 35. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Question 21. What did Daniel identify as the head of gold in Nebuchadnezzar's dream? A. Nebuchadnezzar. B. Nebuchadnezzar's son. C. David. D. Solomon. You get 10 seconds. That's A. Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel chapter 2 verse 38. You are that head of gold. Daniel clarified that the head of gold in Nebuchadnezzar's dream symbolized Nebuchadnezzar himself. It represented the Babylonian Empire's era of power, wealth, and the king's ability to understand dreams and mysteries, a unique feature of Nebuchadnezzar's reign. Question 22. What did the remaining parts of the statue made of silver, bronze, iron, and clay in Nebuchadnezzar's dream symbolize? A. The diverse riches of Babylon. B. Four other kingdoms. C. The changing seasons in Babylon. D. Various religious beliefs in the Babylonian Empire. You get 10 seconds. That's B, Four Other Kingdoms, Daniel chapter 2, verses 39 to 43. The silver, bronze, iron, and clay portions of the statue in Nebuchadnezzar's dream symbolize subsequent kingdoms that would succeed Babylon. This progression represented the historical succession of empires, Medo Persia, Greece, Rome, and the divided kingdoms. Each metal denoted the strength and characteristics of these kingdoms, with the mixture of iron and clay signifying a later stage of fragmentation and weakness. Question 23. What did the stone in Nebuchadnezzar's dream represent? A. The Messiah's kingdom coming out of heaven. B. The work of God overcoming all other kingdoms. C. A kingdom God would set up that would last forever. D. God's eternal people destroying the kingdoms of this world. You get 10 seconds. That's C. A kingdom God would set up that would last forever. Daniel chapter 2, verses 44 to 45. 
The stone in Nebuchadnezzar's dream represented a kingdom divinely established by God, destined for eternal existence. This kingdom, initiated by God, would outlast and triumph over all earthly realms. Question 24. What was Nebuchadnezzar's response to Daniel's description and interpretation of the statue's dream? A. He put a crown on Daniel's head. B. He gave Daniel a throne to sit on next to his. C. He fell prostrate before Daniel. D. He asked that a wreath be placed around Daniel's neck. You get 10 seconds. That's C. He fell prostrate before Daniel. Daniel chapter 2 verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. Impressed by Daniel's interpretation, Nebuchadnezzar fell in reverence, acknowledging Daniel's God as supreme. Question 25. Nebuchadnezzar said all of the following about God after Daniel interpreted the statue dream except A. The Lord of Kings B. The Revealer of Mysteries C. He is the God of Gods D. The Wisest of Gods You get 10 seconds. That's D, the wisest of gods. Daniel, chapter 2, verse 47. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. Oh wow, what an incredible odyssey we've just concluded, unraveling the life of Nebuchadnezzar through our immersive exploration. I'm genuinely eager to hear about your personal journey through the quiz we've shared. Drop a comment below, letting us know how many questions you answered correctly. And more importantly, share the profound lessons you've gleaned from Nebuchadnezzar's dynamic life. As we reflect on the captivating narrative of Nebuchadnezzar, consider sharing this enlightening experience with your friends and family. Invite them to join in on this illuminating quiz and together, Let's create a ripple effect of knowledge, understanding, and appreciation for the timeless stories within the book of Daniel. Thank you for being part of this enlightening adventure, for keeping the conversation alive, and for your commitment to continuous learning. See you next time.